more to the edge, Compass Data Centers has recently announced a $3 billion fund to build and expand its portfolio. I'm now joined by CEO Chris Crosby, uh, who joins me at Telecom Finvest Summit in Zurich to talk what's next. Um, Chris, first question, what is next? Because at the moment you've got data centers in Ohio, Texas, Virginia, Quebec, Arizona, and you have this massive fund of $3 million to spend. Next for Compass continued growth. Uh, we've got our campuses in, the, in North America uh, that we're continuing to expand on, and we are starting to look into uh, other international expansion. What sort of international expansions are we looking into Asia? Mostly into India. All right. So, any more information in the East and countries? India has well, Africa needs as well, so. It does, it does. Uh, you know, more than me than the, uh, than the Africa. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, the, so Europe and Middle East. Okay. When can we sort of expect the first announcement? We're hopeful, we're hopeful for, uh, for this year. Uh, that's really our charter. So AJ Byers is our new head of international uh, business, uh, came as part of our acquisition. In last summer, uh, up in Quebec, and uh, so we're, we're we're actively pursuing and trying to find the right opportunities that make sense for our client goals. Okay. Can you leave the veil a little bit on the size of the project? So we we are looking at the whole at, in the wholesale data center space and for the cloud and, and hyperscale type of type of uses. Uh, so it's in the, it's in the multi megawatt type right. campus type of strategy that we would deploy uh, as we've been deploying successfully in North America. Yeah, it's quite big, I guess, asking you for what the customers are, it's too early. <laughs> a little too soon. <laughs> All right, when it comes to investors as well, you've got quite a few good names here. You've got Redbird Capital, Ontario Teachers, Ars Rally, which is a new comer to the market recently. Uh, what are they looking for? What, what's their priorities when they fund a business like yours? Especially because you have a big focus on edge as well, and edge is still relatively new, especially for the investment community. Um, what are these guys after? What's the priority? You know, I, I think uh, we've got a great investor base. Um, it, it, the diversification is fantastic. Uh, you know, I've got board members in London, I've got board members in Tel Aviv, in New York. So, so we're struggling. Just nice. sitting. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's good perspective. Um, I, you know, our our goal is to continue to um, you know deploy efficient as efficient a capital as we can from an investment perspective. Um, we are we you know as as it relates to the edge, uh, the edge is really a opportunity for us that is a, a future opportunity. We'll continue to to incubate and create uh, those types of opportunities over time, but it's really not at a commercialization stage at this point. Okay, and here in Zurich, we've spoken a lot about the edge, but we've also spoken a lot about REITs. Is REITs something that costs for compensation in the near future? A little future. The REITs? Yeah, becoming REITs. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't really think so. I, you know, a REIT is really, from a U.S. perspective, is really a tax structure. Um, you do get access to a few investors, but the private capital markets are excellent right now uh, versus the public capital markets. Um, I much prefer the being private, having been a social <laughs> US having been an officer before. Um, I do think that the uh, the REIT model, as as you, we do so much development that we don't have a lot of. Uh, you know, we don't have a taxation risk at this point. Um, I think as you look at things, it's really a structuring element as opposed to an investment philosophy in marketing. Okay. But first, we had 350 deals, um, M&A deals in data since yeah. the last four years. 57% of them were done by P, mm -hmm. by private equity firms. How do you see this changing, let's say, in the next 12 to 24 months? Because at the moment, what's been said is that there's more money out there. They have more money to invest in those places to invest in. Yes. So how do you think the market's going to shift? Are we just going to see companies like you're getting more money? Are we going to see new companies being born? What do you see in the market overall, not just Compass? You know, I, I don't see, I think it's tough to enter now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I started Compass a little bit eight years ago. Uh, you talk about just the North American markets? I'm just saying in general, okay. uh, in general. I mean, I don't know that I would do it again as an experienced uh, uh, entrepreneur in this yeah. space. Um, <laughs> You know, I think the market is maturing, the market is differentiating uh, quickly, but it's also consolidating. The client bases don't like dealing with so many people. And so, yeah, there are a few places for that capital to go, which should create more capital efficiency in the companies. Okay. And obviously, we are in Zurich for Finvest. What was the one thing that you've learned that you didn't know before you came to this event? And what's the one thing that you expect, that having learned from this event, that you expect is going to be put into place in the market? What's going to change? You know, one of the great things about this conference is, is learning the combination of the old and the new. Uh, I get to see a lot of familiar faces from over the years, but also some of the, some of the new things that, that have been coming out. Uh, it's always enjoyable to see. Um, you know, learning where some of the governments are thinking about things now versus where they have been in the past. Uh, you always learn a little bit new. Um, 
So from, from my perspective, I think the most interesting thing over the next 12 months is really where the next things are. I'm not always focused on where the next is, and obviously Europe has been predominantly a flat-based market. Uh, where those where that goes and where the customers take things in the future is going to be really interesting to see that play out here over the next 12 months. So are you saying that you're maybe not going to go into the flops? You're going to go into T2? <laughs> well, if you look at our history, we've shown that we, we, we do deploy into, into secondary markets. We're very good at it. Okay. Um, and while we're not afraid of the primary markets either, uh, yeah. you know, so I think it's an and, but uh, when you look at your forays into things, obviously less competition is better than more. Okay. Can we, I will try to break it down. Can we South Europe, North Europe, <laughs> Central Europe? <laughs> uh, sure, yes. How about that as an answer? So we're, we're, looking at, <laughs> we're looking at a variety of different markets. Um, and you know, it's finding the right team, the right opportunities uh, within that market. And, and the length of time that it takes to get to develop product in that market is always a difficult always a difficult proposition no matter what country that you're operating in. Okay, final question. question sure. is, when can we expect Compass Data Centers to have the same amount of footprint that it has in the US and not in Canada, in Europe? Boy, I think that's going to be tough to get the same footprint. The scale in the US market is just so much bigger. Right. Um, but in terms of sites and quantities and, and things like that, you know, we'll hopefully be there in a few years. Okay, five, ten? Yeah, I think we're, where are we at right now? We've got, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, probably 12, yeah. All right, that sounds exciting. So no, that's what should be <laughs> All right, Chris, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thanks. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.